All right, today we're going to be digging into the charging system on a 1975 Suzuki GT500. This is a two-stroke twin cylinder. Uh, we've got the heads here, the cylinder here, cylinders here. They're two separate even though they look uh, like the same thing. So we're going to pull the, the stator, the flywheel, we'll have the countershaft sprocket, the clutch adjust here, gear shifter, kick starter, and then we'll end up disassembling this entire motor here. Just wanted to start with the uh, charging system here as that's a common issue on these. So we've got a 12 millimeter here that we're going to pull first and that is a 12 millimeter socket to pull this shifter off and then we've got a 14 millimeter to pull this kick starter off. And then these you can take, a lot of times you got to stick something in here and just kind of pry up on it. When they're brand new I'm sure you can do it without prying anything but you want to make sure you don't get too too uh, hard on the uh, this case here and damage that up. And then there's your gear shifter there. It's kind of at a, an odd angle. Splines are good on this one. Now we've got our kickstarter here. Like I said, that's a 14. And this just pinches down on these splines here. You can kind of see if you separate this, it creates more uh, space there. If you can't get your kickstarter off, you can always take and spread those, and a lot of times that'll help. But most of the time, you're able just to walk it off there like this, and we'll put this bolt back in. Sometimes, on some of these models, you have to uh, actually take your bolt all the way out. On this one, it'd be awful close, but I do think you gotta take your bolt out. I do it just uh, just if if I don't know, absolutely, because you don't wanna damage those splines where that Kickstarter set. So. Next we're going to pull this cover here. This is the counter shaft sprocket cover, the front sprocket if you will. I use a, uh, an impact driver like this. This is a Matco impact driver and contact me in the comments if you need one of these. I do sell them. Um, but they are what you do when you've got a tight bolt. So say I loosened all these up just to save some time. But say you got a tight one here. Um, take a screwdriver. Take a screwdriver and turn it, okay? If you're not getting it like that, then you take this impact driver here and you turn it in the position that you, or in the direction that you want it to go, and then just tap it one time, then they'll just walk right out. Now, I've done this on all of them, just save some time. It is a little time consuming, a little more time consuming than using a screwdriver, but these are all loose and you never, you almost never run into a bolt you, or a, a Phillips screw that you can't get out with an impact driver, so they just work so well. We've got our case bolts here. And then I believe that is all of them. We've got your clutch cable coming down in here, and then underneath this, it's got a Suzuki emblem on it. It's a rubber cap here is where you adjust your clutch. You got a 12 millimeter lock nut, and then your clutch adjust, which is a flat screwdriver. You turn it in to, to tighten that up to make a to make it have contact. Now, these sometimes, just because of the age, are gonna be a little challenging to come off of there. You tap, I tap on it ever so lightly. I, I don't like to tap on it, but a lot of times, um, just because of the age, they are a challenge to get off of there. You can use a rubber mallet as well. You don't, you wanna to try to refrain from tapping in areas like this, as that can definitely cause uh, damage. So, all right, that cover is off. Oh, we got a mess in there. But there is your clutch adjustment here. Your clutch cable runs down into here. Sits on there. To take this clutch cable off, then you can just, there's a little tab in behind where this cable sits. You bend that out, and then this cable will just slide out. Can't, it's hard to see with my hands there, but then you can just unscrew that. That's a 12 millimeter up top there, and unscrew that cable out of there. Uh, that grease cert will, um, I don't want to dump dirt all over, but the greaser is right there, and um, it's greasing this housing here. So that's where your clutch, when you pull your clutch lever, it'll push on this rod here and uh, disengage your clutch and engage your clutch when you let off. So that is, you want to make sure that that's greased up occasionally so that uh, that moves freely. And I think a lot of times what happens is if you grease that too much, that grease will just sit in here and and create quite a mess, which is what we have here. So next thing we're gonna do is pull the stator and the flywheel. We've got that same impact driver that I used earlier. Now I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, since I already have those loose, I'm gonna go ahead and pull those, this cover off already.
And like I said earlier, there's no gasket on this one, um, so it doesn't seal up. Obviously, your chain's running in here, debris and stuff is getting in here. I'd have been a little more, more leery to, to put a screwdriver in there and pry on this if this was an extremely sealed area, such as like this clutch or this uh, stator cover here. You want to make sure that that doesn't get damaged at all. But um, we're dirt and debris and stuff is coming in here anyways. The screwdriver uh, wasn't going to damage it a whole lot more than it already had been. Got a 17 millimeter for the flywheel here. And then I like to take and pull with two screwdrivers or uh, two picks or anything, just pull this uh, washer out of here. And then it'll just pop off like that. A lot of times it won't pop off. What you do then, I take a hammer, steel hammer, just tap right on the end of that. A lot of times that will just cause it to pop right off. If no. No issues. Sometimes you ding this up, but a lot of times I'll even leave my socket on here when I do tap on that. Then we can just run these bolts out. And again, let me know if you need this polar comment um, underneath this video, and I can I can order you this and send it to you. And that's the last time we'll need that puller. That's the only thing you need it for, but it is essential to have that puller to pull this flywheel off. If you've got a better way, let me know, but I have never seen you be able to remove this flywheel without a puller like that. Next thing, we've got three Phillips screws to hold this stator on. This is what they call the stator assembly. We try to use a, uh, a Matco screwdriver here with the the tip on the end to try to get these smaller screws. We could use an impact driver, but a lot of times these smaller ones um, you can pull off a lot easier. This is a number two screwdriver, and a lot of times these number two screws can be pulled off with a with a good high quality screwdriver. So all three of these came out pretty easily. It looks like we've got a keeper here, and I'm not totally sure. And that's a larger style. That'd be a number three keeper. Or number three, um, Phillips, which that's where we bring an impact driver in to loosen up because these are just a lot more challenging to get out with a screwdriver. And this one actually isn't very tight at all. So All right, that's out. And then what we'll do is we've got our our uh, stator wires run out here and our pulser wires is our pulser here and these just push through here it looks like we've got a a sensor here that's going to be holding us up as well i'm going to clean some of this dirt out here so we can try to find this sensor wire okay we got a small phillips here i'm still trying to find exactly how it looks but we know it's a phillips I'll loosen this up slightly and that that will just pull right out of there. So that sensor's ready to go. This stator here. Sometimes you gotta take and just get a little push. And then this this is a rubber gasket that seals this up from any debris. You don't want any water, sand, or any kind of junk getting down in here. And then once you get those wires fished there that through there, we can just pull this stator out. We'll test this stator. I'll show you how to do that in a separate video. And I'll show you if we've got issues with it. I'll show you how to how to test that. Got our, like I said earlier, that's your clutch adjustable. Your clutch, they call it a push. Got all kinds of grease built up on there. But that rod should be smooth. No, no grooves you want that to slide back and forth freely and you don't want it to spit oil out of that seal right there. That seal is pretty common. Let me know if you need that seal. I can get that seal for you. It's a common to go bad just because that clutch rod is constantly going back and forth. 
Counter shaft sprocket here taken. This has got a flat keeper on here. You'd flatten that out. Uh, this one, there's actually two sides. If it works, oh, nope, just one. Sometimes they'll take, sometimes the manufacturer will take and bend two of these sides up here. This is an inch and a quarter socket to pull this off. And these kind, these are a little bit challenging because you hate to get your finger stuck in there, spin it. But in this case, we're in, we're stuck in gear, so we're able just to spin it off there without holding it. Otherwise, I'd suggest you putting something large. In there. Certainly, don't want to use your finger, but putting something in there to cause this from spinning. You don't want this to spin while you're pulling this. And this keeper here. There we go. And then this will just lift right off of there. There's a spacer here. This can come out at some point. And we've got probably a gear position sensor here. All right, and that sensor's off there. That little tail there tells there's a brass where the actual sensor sits down in here that, that does the job. So let's see. We'll spin that off now while we're here. Well, I might use my impact driver on this one. Oh, this one just pops right off, so that wasn't hard to do. All right, that'll I'll set that with those parts there. That'll now we won't have to do that part of it later. All right, we're gonna flip this motor over. At some point, we'll pull this cylinder head and the cylinders, but we're gonna pull this over now. We're gonna pull those clutches or the clutch. We've already drained the oil out of this motor. And it is heavy. It ran a two stroke. It's a heavy motor. And we've got Phillips all the way around this thing. Here's your fill plug here. It's just a rubber cap that seals up, not not threaded, but you just spin that, or you don't have to spin it, just push it on, sorry. Those are a common problem to go bad too. Here's your brake sensor here, and you've got uh, just all those Phillips bolts going around the outside. And I have loosened those up again because I wanted this to be ready for you. This one is sealed up really good with a gasket as well, so. I've had some, looks like possibly some water sitting in here. I don't know why that wouldn't have drained when we drained that oil, but. All right, clutch cover is off there. You see your clutch in here. And there's the inside. This is the gasket here. Make sure this oil didn't dump on the floor, but we've got uh, your shift mechanism that runs through here. This runs all the way to the other side. And then this gasket, every time we pull this cover off, you want to replace this gasket. This is not the original gasket. So we can just throw that away. And then we've got 10 millimeter. Let's see if I can tip this up a better. Better way for you guys to see this. 10 millimeter bolts around this clutch here. I do these in a crisscross pattern. And 
and then you're able just to pull this top cover off. Now, if, all, if we're replacing the clutch uh, friction plates, which this is the friction plate here, this is as far as you need to take off as far as the, the clutch part of it. So fl friction here, and then we've got steel underneath here. And I'll show you how to measure those in a separate video. But um, we've got friction and steel, and it's every other on these clutches. And this is, they've got the top plate or the top holder or the top hub is what they call this. And um, if all we're doing is replacing plates, all you gotta do is pull the plates on and out from here. You pay attention to the order. Sometimes they'll throw a different one on the front or on the back uh, with like a spacer or something. Just make sure as you're pulling these apart, you know um, how they go back together. And we've got your, we're going to pull this clutch basket off and I'm going to show you a little tr trick here. So flatten all this, these spacers here and this again, obviously it was off because Suzuki wouldn't have flattened every side of this spacer. This uh, basket is aluminum, so just be really careful we don't damage it when we're get, taking it apart here. Then again, we have our inch and a quarter socket. Pull this one out, same size as our counter shaft sprocket. Now I'd like to take my thumb and hold right here on one of these posts, that way it doesn't spin. And then that nut is off of there. Now what, now what you can do, so you can actually, I like taking just lift up just to make sure, but then you can take, put this hub back on there, or this top plate back on there, and then take all these. Now if you're, if you're uh, replacing the basket or something, you've got to disassemble all this, and you may as well do that right now. But where we are taking this off all as one piece, I'm going to take and put these back in and snug them up. That way we keep the entire clutch pack together. I like to start them all because like I said, it's, it's aluminum and if you start these out at, in the wrong spot at all, it uh, can create some damage. Alright, now what you can do is take, then, take the entire clutch pack out just like that. You can drop this out and have it just like that, inspect your basket. Uh, replace your basket if you need if your plates for some reason are good but your basket isn't which generally isn't the case but um, we've got your clutch assembly there this is your push rod this is what we talked about on the other side this goes actually goes all the way through right uh, from well, I had moved that other cover but these uh, work together so that's what that arm that you had to put a uh, grease in every once in a while that Somebody put way too much of it in this time. That's where that arm goes into. We've got your shift mechanism here. Your shift shaft that runs all the way through. It's spring loaded, so be kind of be careful taking that apart. It's probably not gonna break a finger off. It's not that stout, but it is spring loaded. So here is that shaft that runs all the way through and that can just pull out. You can pull that in and out whenever you want. It doesn't line up with anything in the middle of that transmission there. And we've got your spacer that sits on the end there. We've got your shift mechanism here. We won't pull that apart quite yet, but it's just Phillips screws, four Phillips screws here, and then we can pull that, pull that off. So we've got also this bolt that runs on your crank there, kind of turns your clutch. And this one again, just flatten that. Spacer there, inch and a quarter again. And you know what, I'm not actually even gonna turn that one off quite yet because we're gonna try to use that to turn that motor over. That kickstart wasn't, kickstart without having this installed in the motor wasn't, installed in the bike wasn't, uh, I wasn't able to kick that motor over. Right now we're gonna remove this gear assembly. I'm trying to clean up all this oil and junk here so you can see a little bit better. Get some 
nasty oil in here. All right, impact driver then. I'm gonna get to show you how to use this impact driver because I haven't loosened these yet like I have the rest of them. A lot of times it just takes one good hit to loosen these. Once they loosen up, I like to take this impact and spin them out then. Okay, when you shift a gear, so you've got your left foot that's shifting a gear, it's going to shift, it's going to move this rod. Uh, let's see if you're going, and it's going to turn this. And this is actually on the end of your shift drum. So we've got two spring-loaded pieces right here. I like to do on these is... Um, I'm gonna put pressure on them, push down, because what happens is they are, uh, they're in a groove and they will go all over if you just let them go. So here, if you can see it moving back and forth when I push it, I just wanna be really careful. Sometimes I'll zip tie, zip tie those together, um, but as soon as we get the drum out, we can just slide that back down, but that drum's gonna slide out that other way. So that is that piece. We like to try to keep them together. And if you heard that, as soon as I let go of them, it sprung and those caps fell out. So that's just how that goes sometimes. But we are going to pull a cylinder, pull the heads, pull the cylinders off, and then we will um, dig into that transmission. We've got our oil pump here. We've got one cylinder off. They're a bit of a challenge to get off. These studs here are extremely rusty. Piston may be seized on there. We don't know for sure, but what we're going to do is disassemble actually the bottom end first, hoping to uh, pull that piston and, um, out of that cylinder. And then I, I think this crank is actually locked up, but we'll find out. Didn't want to damage the, the bottom base of the cylinder uh, using crowbars or punches or anything. So we're going to try to do it from the bottom. But we're going to go ahead now and pull this oil pump, and I'm going to show you how to how to do that here, 10 millimeter bolts. We'll take the cover off. And you've got your cable that runs down in here. And then to pull this uh, oil pump off, we've got Phillips screws, one on either side of this. But we, this hose here is gonna probably be in the way, so we'll remove that with an eight millimeter. We'll actually just loosen all these up right now. These are banjo bolts and this oil then is dispersed to different parts in the, the bottom of the cylinder there, um, down into the crankcase there. All right, we've got those lines off. Now we're gonna take a, an impact driver that I've used on previous videos. And then loosen those up, makes that an easy trick there. and that oil pump is ready to come off there. There's the bottom gear. You want to make sure uh, occasionally you'll see if something locks up down here, it'll shear these two tabs off there. So inspect that, make sure that's in good working condition. What you can do is just block that off and uh, mix your oil. But All right, I'm going to take a handful of 10 millimeter bolts off that are, uh, you know, yeah, I'm going to take a handful of 10 millimeter bolts off that are on this crankcase just to get these out of the way for when we do split this case. We've got our brake light sensor here. That just pulls off of there. That doesn't hold crankcase together, but that's the sensor. And we've got a handful of 12 millimeter bolts as well. Nothing up front on the top side anyways. There will be several on the bottom side. Alright, and we've got the two 12 millimeters, and that may be all we have right now. And we will flip. 
flip this case over, dig into that transmission. Drain bolt is here. Well, it looks like could potentially be a couple different ones, but. We also have a handful of 14s. clutch rod that slid out here. Check our other videos on how to adjust that. That goes right by that, uh, goes actually through that uh, counter shaft sprocket cover. And then a mess of 14 bolts here. remove these other two here. These I don't believe. This is obviously a drain bolt. This is a drain bolt as well. Make it farther down in that crankcase. to remove this cover here it's counter shaft sprocket runs right there um, and to split this case this is actually going to give us fits because the case runs up and down right here so we'll take impact driver and we'll undo all four of these bolts here Not sure we're gonna be able to split this case with that cylinder still being on there, but we'll give it a best shot. I guess if our main thing is that piston sliding down, which it's not actually gonna do, that piston's gonna hold us up, but we'll see what it takes to split this case and see if we can get farther than we were before, anyways. But we might be able to get at least this bottom off of here. All right, bottom case is off. Okay, so we've got in here, I'm gonna show you this from the bottom side. Our transmission, I'm gonna put a block here to hold this up so you guys can see so I can explain it. We've got our counter shaft sprocket here. We've got a speedometer gear here and that runs this right, this gear right here, if you can see this one. Okay, we've got your shift drum here with your shift forks here, three shift forks on this shaft here. Kickstarter gear here. Some of these are a little more. Uh, crankshaft obviously here, and this you can see is where the damage is. This thing is just rotted beyond belief. So I don't know if rust is what's caused the 
it to lock up or if it was locked up and seized up before then. But now we can get, well, I don't know how, how this helps us to get this cylinder off, but we need to get that cylinder off before we go ahead and put this back together. Um, other than that, I'll, I'll maybe try to dismantle some of this transmission for you so you can see how it works here. Kickstarter here, looks like it just held on by this uh, bolt here. And this is spring loaded, so be careful. Uh, probably not gonna go flying, but there's gonna be some, some bounce to it. And then you can just potentially slide this out. This, yep, just pulls right out the top there. So you can hear the ratchet part of it in there. For when you kick it, it'll just spin one way, the other side it grabs. So Kickstarter gear there. Now our shift drum. See if we can just slide this shaft out of here if there's more that we need to do. I'd be surprised if you can just slide it out of there, but. Okay, for the shift forks then you can just slide that out of there, which is not a real common deal. Then I try to keep them in the same order, just so when we're going back together, a little less time to, to guess. Got our three forks there. Shift drum actually just slides out there. Okay, so this, what I said was your drain bowl, is actually a spring-loaded detent that holds that drum into place when you're in gear. So now we're able to, so that, this detent uh, slides into these grooves there, keeping you in gear. So if your bike is slipping in and out of gear, check this, shift drum, shift this, check this detent here to make sure that it is spring loaded, make sure that spring's going up and down, make sure these aren't too grooved right here uh, against each other. You sit there and shift back and forth, you're potentially wearing that drum out. Shifting back and forth isn't gonna cause that um, permanent damage, but over time there's a lot that happens there. So that is the one side, we'll see how far we can get with this transmission here. These actually just slide up out of there just like that. And then we've got this shaft here that slides out as well. So clutch sits on one counter shaft, sprocket sits on the other one. Speed, uh, this is the oil pump gear here. Just pulls out there. And crankshaft, like I said, we're gonna have our hands uh, tied with that one. So that is tearing into a Suzuki GT500.